You're listening to the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. In today's publishing landscape, you can reach fans all over the world. Query letters are a thing of the past. You don't even need a literary agent. There is nothing standing in the way of making a living from writing. Join two best-selling authors who have self-published more than 20 books between them. Now, on to the show with your hosts, Autumn Burt and Jasper Schmidt. Hello, I'm Jasper. And I'm Autumn. This is episode 115 of the Am Writing Fantasy, and this is one more of our light-hearted episodes where we're going to share 10 terrible ways of creating characters. So I'm really looking forward to hear what you came up with here, Autumn. Yeah, it was kind of, it was a challenge and it was fun because there was times I was like, oh, I might try that, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I actually, um, since we're doing 10, I assumed this is an alternating list. So I only needed to come up with five, but I came up with a couple of extra just in case you chose the Oh, you have like a bonus... I well, just in case you already chose one, that way I, I I could still put in an entry to win this one. Damn, that's well prepared. I didn't ha. even think about that. I did my homework uh. and I did extra homework, so ha! I already won. Uh. No, well, no, that I don't agree to. <laughs> but okay. uh, let's see, because you might have some mediocre bonus ones, but that doesn't trump my very good ones. Oh, we'll see. (laughs) Challenge accepted. We will check this out. But first, how are things over on your side of the Atlantic? Uh, It's it's good. Uh, Just uh, writing, um, taking care of uh, job stuff, you know, right? Uh, But I also, I actually finished reading uh, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rutfuss. I finished reading it this Uh, weekend. Uh, that that book, it's I re- hear so much about it. I, like I recognize yes. his name everywhere, and it's I have not read it yet myself. But I'm like, wow, I've, it's just like it's already got this known mythos. So how was it? But that was exactly why I I bought it and read it yeah. because of all the praise it gets. So uh-huh. I thought, okay, I better read this one and figure out what's <laughs> the uh, what's all the fuss about. Yeah. <laughs> And I must I must say that uh, I understand why he's getting so much praise for his writing. Uh, it oh, it is the writing itself is really well done. Oh, excellent! Uh, really, really nice writing, and uh, you you get you get so much into the characters. So that mm. is very well done. I'm actually planning to share a bit more in our readers group on Facebook. Uh, a bit more on my thoughts on it, but uh, I also. Small, uh, not spoiler for the book, but small spoiler for my opinions that I'm going to share on the readers group on <laughs> Facebook is that I am missing a bit of action. Oh, yeah. I'm missing a bit that, that something happening, actually. I mean, there is something happening here and there, but it is also a lot about just the character and, you know, basically like how the character grows into becoming the person that he is. And the entire book is more or less flashback. So okay. it's basically wow. the main character telling uh, like a scribe mm-hmm. who is then sitting there writing down uh, his story. Um, and it starts from his childhood and then how he sort of grows into becoming what he is. So I'm not going to spoil anything, of course, here. But um, but it, it is basically like a very, very slow, uh, long sh- uh, flashback with some chapters here and there where you're in the present, but very few. So that also means that a lot of the a lot of the story actually is more or less about him growing up stuff, which character wise is extremely well done. It's extremely well written. So uh, so that is good. But I would really like a bit more action. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I, I definitely my writing and reading definitely gravitates towards more action. Like I want characters I care, care about, but I want to see them doing things. So. That'll be interesting. I, I've been thinking a bit of picking it up, so I'll, I'll look forward to your review. And don't forget to review it on Goodreads since you did join. It's a good, you know, tool to use. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that as well. I was thinking, that, well, maybe we were going to set up at some point uh, here in the near future. Not quite sure when, but we'll probably let people know. But we were going to set up a, a group on Goodreads. So yes. once we get that going, I will post videos, I think, in that group about stuff like this. So I am going to share it, but I don't know if I want to get into all the reviewing officially kind of thing on Goodreads. I'm not sure I want to do that, but uh, 
Well, also, I, I don't I don't like uh, you know. Well, one author reviewing other authors, it feels like a bit like, hmm, I'm not sure <laughs> that's a good idea. We can be overly nice or overly critical of other authors. I will say that it's kind of hard. There's no in between because we're never just readers. We're reading it for looking at what we like, what we don't like, what the flaws we see. And it, it definitely, I've, I've noticed authors when they review other authors' works. Sometimes it can be just all, oh, you do, you work so hard on this, good for you. And other ones are like, well, if this was my story. So <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it's, night and, it's night and day. It's really funny. Yeah, the thing is that it's all subjective, right? So yeah. just because I think I would like more action doesn't mean that there isn't a million people out there who thinks it's the best book they ever read, right? Now, I don't okay. want to sort of get into that crossfire there. <laughs> uh, it's just like, it's just my opinion. And I, uh, I, you know, I'm entitled to that like everybody else is entitled to theirs. We yeah. don't have to have a fight about it. But no. <laughs> once you start posting official reviews about it, then you risk having a fight about it. And I'm sure I want to do that. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Uh, a private group is slightly different in terms of uh, just sharing some thoughts about it. that's slightly different than an, an official written review, I think, with stars on it and all that. That's so, true. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, um, apart from uh, sort of jinxing our podcast distribution and also breaking that one autumn, uh, I don't know what else you've been up to this <laughs> last week. <laughs> I'm trying not to break things, I swear. But yeah, okay, so the podcast distribution got a little delayed because I touched something on the website and seemed to broke something again. But I'm breaking things less frequently. <laughs> yeah, I'm really nope. hoping that it'll, it's going to end soon. This can't keep going, you know, with you I breaking know. everything you touch. Uh, and especially because this when, when this episode is released next sun the coming sunday in less than like six days from when this is released my next book in the tainted phase series is being released and i'm so excited so hopefully i don't break amazon when i upload it oh my god you just see like uh, i can just see the uproar like every author starts panicking oh kdp is down kdp is down it's like autumn did you upload anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> That'll be me, but hopefully I'm just excited to get this one out the door. I love what the, I've been hearing from the ARC readers, so I'm really, I just cannot wait to share this one with the world. Yeah, and it, and by the way, if anybody got confused about what we were talking about with the podcast distribution there, just to uh -huh. uh, let the reader know, um, well, by the time this airs, it's been a few weeks, actually, uh, so maybe you don't even remember, or maybe you don't, didn't notice, but... Some might have noticed how episode 112 only appeared in your feed like several days after the Monday it was supposed to get distributed. Yeah. And I'm not going to mention why that was and who touched something, but uh, yeah, you might know. <laughs> <laughs> just, I swear I need to come with a little note that says maybe a jinx. <laughs> I just... <laughs> yeah, a little note, don't do this shit at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, that'll be my life motto. A week on the internet with the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. So we have something very special to mention today. Uh, we don't do this very often, but once in a while, we just love offering something extra, something special for our patron supporters. Yes, and I'm so excited. That the, there's so much stuff going on in March. We just had the guide course. I have a book coming out in a week. And we're doing something very special over on Patreon. Yeah, we have a special giveaway. Uh, but it won't be open for long. So we're going to close it again on the 22nd of March. So this will apply to all existing Patreon supporters as well as everyone who signs up before the 22nd of March. Yes, so definitely come and join us. And we are giving everyone who joins or is already a member there a copy of our plot development book because we think everyone should feel special and that's just the type of people we are, I guess. We overgive, we overshare, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone is going to get that. And then in addition, we're going to do a draw. Uh, and one lucky winner is going to win a mentor session with Autumn and myself. Yes. Um, and and all of those extra good. prizes, of course, comes on top of the stuff that you will get uh, normally on Patreon. 
yes, that's, oh, and there's different tiers, and there's already cool things with every single one. I mean, it starts at a dollar a month, so you get something instantly uh, for just a buck, which is fantastic, plus you get a chance to win, plus you get a chance to, you go ahead and you get the plot development book, which has gotten so many praises, so that's fantastic. And it even has some extra things you can get for free in it, so we just keep giving things away. It's a very interesting model we've got going on there. Yeah, I don't know business-wise how smart that is, but that's a different conversation. (laughs) But uh, in short, I mean, there's never been a better time to sign up to support the Amp Writing Fantasy than right now then. Uh, And as always, you will find the link in the show notes. And on to today's topic. So this should be fun. I'm actually I like these uh, alternating lists uh, episodes. They are <laughs> yes, quite fun. It brings out your competitive spirit, which I've noticed you're a high competitor. So this will be hmm, it'll be interesting. Yeah, you know, I figured out the one thing I am missing. Yeah. Uh, normally when I'm a referee, I have my yellow and red cards. I feel like I should have that here as well. <laughs> so that if you're not behaving, I can uh, give you a red card and put you in the sin bin and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just touch the computer and the entire thing will explode. So watch it. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, that, I didn't think about that. That's actually I have right. Power. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually glad that I'm the one doing the controls of the podcast here because otherwise it probably would stop recording or something all of a sudden. I am so afraid to touch my computer right now. <laughs> yeah, please don't touch anything. Just speak into the mic without touching the mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is difficult. All right. But what if my computer goes to sleep? That could be its own problem. Anyway, we won't go there. We're like... <laughs> no, yeah. Oh. Okay, so I think uh, we have five uh, each, and you have a few bonus ones. And I then, of do. course, we should, at the end, try to figure out which one is the worst of the worst then. Okay. And okay. Uh, it would make most sense if it's probably one of mine. So if anybody gets... Uh, you know, well, if you just want to skip to the end of the episode, you can listen to uh, us concluding that one of mine was the best one. We'll and, see uh, if we that's get it. there. <laughs> well, what? You've what? got to earn that. You have to earn that. Sorry. It, no freebies here. Well, only freebies to listeners and other authors. No freebies to us. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go through the motion then All if right. you insist. But <laughs> yes, uh, it's not going to change the outcome. So do you, I see I I had a hard time differentiating with mine. I don't know which one's worse or what. So uh, mine's slightly a random order, but we'll go for okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I well, I guess most of mine could be in a different order as well. I did try to make number 1 like that's probably the worst one I could think of, <laughs> uh but if you want to upward upward one of the other ones, that's okay with me as well. So you All can right. do that. All right. Sounds good. So, who wants to go first? We have to flip a coin, or, or shall I graciously allow you to to start, since you believe yours are already better? Um, okay, yeah, you. Okay, yeah, I understand. You want to get right into the good stuff. You know, normally yeah. when I eat candies and stuff like that, I, sh- I save the good ones for last because that's how I, I prefer to do it. But uh, if you want to get straight to the favorite ones, then yeah, let's let's do them. Yeah, put your cards on the table. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, I'm jinxing myself so bad now. <laughs> I know a bluffer when okay. I hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, so, um, number five. All right. So, this one is sticking to archetypes. All right. You know, like sticking to <laughs> archetypes. So, this is the... Uh, you You make the mentor... The one who gives the advice, and you make sure that this is all that character does. Oh. And the hero does all the heroic stuff, and the love interest has an overabundance of love, no matter how badly he or she is actually treated. Oh! So you basically don't give a crap about adding more layers to the character. You just you just want archetypes, and then you might be thinking, "Well, dear reader, you like archetypes, so I'm gonna give them to you." Who cares about cultures or skin color and, oh my God, personality trait, all that nonsense. I tell you, it's just a waste of time to worry about (laughs) such things. I I like that one. And actually, I have to admit, 
that is actually one of the bonus ones I came up with was basically don't create your characters at all. Just make them all stereotypes with virtually no per- personality. I like think Conan the Barbarian. He is the hero's hero and so <laughs> boring. <laughs> so, actually, Have you ever read Conan the Barbarian? I actually have not. I just remember it from the 80s in my childhood and watching it, watching my brother, what, you know, who's older than me, he, he would be running around being Conan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's also the only way. I've never read it either. I, I also only remember watching it um, on TV when I, I was a child or growing up, and I just thought it was so cool. <laughs> Conan, he was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think at the time, I, well, again, my brother was older and beating up on me because he was Conan, so I had a different perspective. <laughs> well, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right. Yes. So you're ready for my number five? Okay, yes. All right. All right, so just don't develop them at all. Use someone else's characters. So if you like Harry Potter, just create Barry Cotter. You know, just create something totally 100% based off of someone else's hard work. I think that's about the worst way I could think of creating a character. Yeah, okay. I might have something similar coming. Oh, I'm not surprised. Because so, it's such so a I'm going to say. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just going to say that must be because that's a pretty good idea then. (laughs) Exactly, (laughs) and I said it first, so there you go. uh, Okay. Mm. Yeah, actually, that's not a good sign. If that was one of your bad ones, then I don't know. If you have (laughs) even better stuff coming. (laughs) Yeah, now I'm a bit worried. Uh, Good. Just where I want you. Hmm. All right, so what's your number four? Number four. Yes. So this one is pure evil. Oh no. So that sounds intriguing, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds very intriguing. So this is the evil characters. They do what they do because they are just assholes. <laughs> Readers who don't understand that are idiots. Why should you even bother justifying that a character is actually flawed? that the person has a trauma which has distorted their worldview and that the character is is actually believing that he or she is doing what is necessary even when it is in fact evil. evil. You know, that kind of thinking, that's garbage. (laughs) It is advice made up by authors who don't know what they're talking about and what, yeah, some of them might be successful. Well, have you ever (laughs) heard about catching lightning in a bottle? I guess not. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, you know there's something pure about just saying well he's evil he's an asshole this is how my character is so you know we could go back to Cruella de Vil-esque um, evil character sure <laughs> yeah that's just uh, that's yeah that's just no way to do an antagonist it's just like no. They're evil because they're evil. Okay, great. I really like <laughs> like that. Wonderful. Yeah, you really no. put a lot of thought into that one, didn't you? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I, I, it would have me personally tearing my hair out because, yeah, I, I like nuances. I like to love, especially me, I love to love my evil characters. I have a hard time letting them lose or... Well, oh, yeah, have a hard but time they can losing. be evil, yeah. yeah, yeah, but they can be evil. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, no. it, there should be a reason for why they're doing what they're doing. They're not just doing it because it's fun to be evil. You know, that makes no but it sense. It is fun to be evil. That's like, I would love well, to be yeah, a okay. super villain. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> Actually, I might be a super villain considering I destroy everything I touch. So, huh. No, Wish I think we worked out that you were the Fae. That's true. Right? That's, yes, based on my forthcoming novel, The Fae can touch they, electronics. Are they evil? There's dark fae. I wouldn't call them evil. They're just mischievous. So that may be. Maybe you're dark fae then. I might be dark fae. Oh, I feel outed. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, so uh, my first one was, you know, just base your character on um, someone else's hard work, which is obviously, especially copyright issues and just you should never undermine another author like that. You should never do it. So instead of basing them... For my number four, instead of basing them all on someone else's characters, just base them all on you. 100%. They're all just 
shades of you. I mean, why spend the time developing characters when you can just make them all you? And you know you, so you should be able to write the book. That's easy, see. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there, the, so that's my number four. <laughs> I think yeah. it's perfect. So basically, all the characters have exactly the same traits, and in dialogue, they all sound like you, exactly the same. <laughs> it's a wonderful book to read. It sounds really engaging. Your mom would like it. <laughs> Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, so, ooh, that's kind of cruel. <laughs> that's funny to find out if your siblings hate you or like you. Do they like your book? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, just imagine the reviews, like, from your own family member saying, I'm not sure I quite like the characters in this book. It's like, what the f It's me. God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's... So there you go. I guess this is why you can never base your own characters on you because you might get really upset about what people say about them. So definitely yeah. take the time to develop your characters. You're running a massive risk there. <laughs> you are. You're going to take it personally because you should. Yeah. All of a sudden, the advice about not uh, responding to one-star reviews is going to be much more difficult to adhere to. Any. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> Number it's like, three. Well, why is the why is the author so defensive about this character? I don't get it. <laughs> Oh, that could be fun. Okay, <laughs> so number three is uh, well, we touched about on it uh, slightly already. So right. this one, I called it being a lazy ass. Oh, I like this. So some idiots could call it being smart, I guess, right. if they're idiots. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, basically, yeah, uh, as you said, copying characters that you already know because readers love them, right? So why would you want to spend your time creating something on your own? You know, call Frodo Modo instead. <laughs> and uh, he's not a hobbit, but he's a dwarf. Okay. And maybe instead of bravery, you change that one trait into him being a wimp. Mm. But otherwise, he's exactly the same. Readers well, gotta go. love it, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't see what's the problem. I mean, no one's gonna sue you or point out that you basically copied someone else's work to create it out you at least changed a couple things on yours yeah, yeah it's not the same yeah he's yeah. called modo what's wrong with that and he's a dwarf and... he lives in a in a place called hobbiton uh but uh and maybe a slightly weird for a dwarf but <laughs> <laughs> but uh and then he has a ring yeah. i mean dwarfs I... likes rings right they yeah. like jewelry exactly what's wrong and it's sort of the whole Hobbit, and you know, also had the it was sort of cave like. You just kind of emphasize that. Maybe call it Dwarfington or something instead of Hobbiton. <laughs> Dwarfington, yeah, yeah, indeed. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I actually it, visited Hobbiton in real life. I know, I'm so jealous. I still have to get down to uh, New Zealand. I want to go there. Go there again. It's amazing. Oh, oh, I'm writing fantasy work trip. Come on. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. We could make a, and then we can record a podcast episode in Frodo's <laughs> house or something. Oh, we have to find a way to do this. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Okay, <laughs> we need to get yeah. back to this podcast <laughs> and stop dreaming. But yeah, you know, your suggestion sounds vaguely familiar, like someone else might have mentioned it a few minutes ago. So, you know. Yeah, but maybe, I, I think maybe my spin on it was slightly just slightly better. Well, maybe, but, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You tried. You added I'm just something saying, to it. I'm just saying. Just <laughs> saying. Hey. All right. So my number three is, I was actually kind of fun to find discover this, but there is a random character generator online. It's a UK-based one. And so okay. can, why do any work? You can go in there and just say, give me a character. And there's a few little inputs. So you can choose fantasy, you can choose hero, you can choose maid, you can choose some things, and it pops out a character. And bing, bang, boom, you're done. You're writing. Just go for it. Did you try to run from... Uh, what just, does it generate? What is it? I think it's, it's like a little character sheet that, you know, almost like you would come up with uh, like traits. Like colors and, and stuff like that? Or what? Yeah, well, no, it gives you some traits and things too. So, you know, you, it comes up with some ideas. Honestly, in some ways, if if you were truly having a hard time coming up with a story idea, I think you could possibly do this just for the fun of it and maybe start creating a, a story around a character. But if you had a story in your mind, 
and you just randomly someone it's like ripping a page out of a D and D book saying, This is my character and trying to force them into your story. I don't think it would work too well, but in its own it was kinda like, Oh, this is this could be actually fun. It's like sitting there and rolling your dice to create a D and D character and seeing what you come up with. Yeah, but I was almost thinking when you were saying that that just as like a starting point, it might not be too bad an idea. Actually, you know, if if you're sort of out of inspiration and uh-huh. what to do, not not to use it like it comes out of that generator, but more like just point. just the starting frame of something, and then you can develop further on that. It might I, not be too bad actually. I have to admit, it was kind of like I found it. I'm like, oh, this could actually be fun. Because <laughs> you might get ha- you might get something you never would have considered before, so yeah. it's a bad idea, but it's also kind of a fun idea. So <laughs> I, I saved the bad. website, so yeah. If yeah. anyone wants to check it out, I mean, you can Google it, but it's just character generator dot org dot uk. So shout out to them. I have never met anyone who works there or created it, but it was literally googling it. It was the only only random character generator online. And it was kind of like, oh, this is fun. This is actually really fun. So go check it out. Yeah. No, I, I was not aware of that one. That's, that's actually interesting. Um, so, yeah. When well, you don't know what to do in the evening, you can sit there and generate <laughs> characters. <laughs> but that sounds really so sorry, life. <laughs> this is what writers do during pandemics and lockdown. Yes. We yeah, that's what you do uh, when you're going in... S- going insane from COVID-19 and you're just sitting there generating characters all night. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got an... I, I'm releasing a book. I'm busy. I'm good. I'm fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Number two. Number two, we're getting there now. Um, so, well, we all know that good stories are about characters, right? Mm-hmm. So you agree? I agree. I do agree. <laughs> Okay, so what if the writer just love, 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 love me some characters? Oh. So why can't I just have a whole bunch of them? So oh, no. they appear and then they do their thing before they disappear completely, offering the stage light to 20 other characters that are equally doing their thing. And uh, then perhaps the guy from early in the book he makes a surprise return during the climax and then whacks the bad guy over the head with a club. Oh, Isn't that awesome? Sure. Go ahead and write that. What? Oh. Who doesn't like characters? What, what do you mean? I don't get it. Everybody uh, loves many, characters. How many of them are point of view characters? Well, all of them. They have <laughs> oh. their chapter each, right? So there's going to be 25 point of view characters. And they, uh, yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Yeah, you can just get the story from different perspectives. I would guess so. Probably a very confusing story. Oh, I had someone complain that I have like eight main characters in my fantasy trilogy. (laughs) I don't understand. I mean, the more the merrier. 35 point of view. It's probably never been done before. It's like unique writing. And I have to admit, my mind is like, how can I organize this? This could actually work. It, It would be, it would be such an interesting challenge. I, I honestly think I need a writing intervention that I'm actually considering how to do this. Oh. Yeah, you'll be surprised next time I send you a story for editing and then it's got to be 35 characters and you got a point of view character and you're going to go back to be like, what is this? <laughs> this is not what we agreed to. <laughs> but it's just oh. I enriched the story. I made it better. Why don't you oh. get it? I don't get it. I, I can't imagine telling a cohesive it reminds me actually and this is a fun thing to actually do but uh, back when we could actually sit around a campfire with other living human beings Mm -hmm. (sighs) okay uh and then someone would start a story and everyone would continue and carry it on um i loved of things like that being able to like just one person creates it and carry it on and see where you end up that could be so much fun. I'm trying to imagine that in a narrative form as an actual novel and I'm <laughs> through different characters and mm. I'm had how to work that into a plot and I I I'm it's not clicking. I'm sorry. I I'm so no, but, sorry. <laughs> but you don't get it. This is just because it's a new level of writing. You just haven't advanced to that level yet, so you can't <laughs> see it. 
<laughs> it's just but, beyond you. It's it just too be advanced. It, it may yeah. be, it is. I will have to admit, I, I, I'm not saying it, but I'll keep working on it. And wait till you wait till you see the next storyline I hand you. <laughs> <laughs> you want something to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Now I can't sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what okay, is next? Okay, your number two. Oh, my number two. That's where we're at. I got totally lost in trying to figure out how to plot a 35-point-of-view novel. <laughs> um, <laughs> for this one, I thought taking it to your near and dear. So instead of basing the characters on yourself or just randomly basing it on your friends and family, you should do a little bit of research here and ask your friends, your family, your roommates, your dorm hall to take personality tests and then use the results for characters. I think it could be fun that you could just base them all on people you know and the people you don't like you could accidentally kill off. It's very cathartic that way. <laughs> and you're going to keep their names as well? <laughs> oh, you know. So you that they know exactly them. who this is. <laughs> rearrange the letters maybe a little bit. Steve could become Vets Steve. or... <laughs> Steve. That's mean. <laughs> I'm not going to get through that one. Tavo. Oh, Tevin. Mm, there's some options there. <laughs> You know, it, it's using real life techniques and real life people. I would say... Everybody says your character should be feel real. What is more real than using, you know, people you know to create your characters? Yeah, that, that was just what I was about to say. At least your characters will be complex and they will have depth. That's for sure. Yes, exactly. But I think you might run a pretty big risk in getting very unpopular with certain people. <laughs> I have to change the names a little bit, but yeah, I, I yeah, think Steve, yeah, Steven. <laughs> yeah, you know, your coworkers, the ones you don't get along with, might pick it up. Maybe, maybe not. You don't have to put your boss yeah. in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's just like with the worst idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> don't be. You could use your crush as the love interest. That's rewarding, isn't it? You can. Well, feel yeah, it. okay. Maybe, or maybe they feel like you're a stalker or something. This creep all actually wrote it in a book as well. <laughs> well, and then if you break up, you can take care of that in the next book in the series. <laughs> That's the next book in the series, yes. <laughs> you can see my dragon. Ta -da. <laughs> oh, uh, nah. it's, it sounds like it's going to be a very boring... Uh, you well then the character went to grocery shopping <laughs> and then got home did the dinner and it's just a really boring book about everyday life well, you need to change so grocery shopping is that's getting supplies so they could be going to the yeah. and there was a dragon the at the shop oh you know those kids uh, <laughs> you never know they could be a horde of angry slobbery dwarves coming to attack you i'd be running screaming so Behind the freezer came, came t 20 angry dwarves. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it could right. work. Hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, this one is going to blow your mind. All okay? right. Okay. I need, let's go for it. Yeah, th this is definitely the winner. It's All just right. like, it doesn't get any better than this. All right. Yeah, let's hear Number it. Number one. Number one, I tell you. This one I call make beep up. So what? beep might be re beep might be representing a word that starts with s. Okay. I could have beeped you for you, but all right, seems fair. Okay. So, this is um the attitude saying I don't think it matters one bit what my character's motivations are. Or how about what their goals are? People are not complex at all. It's actually not that hard. <laughs> you should just make up things as you go along. Character development, all that nonsense. It is something made up by stupid people who want to sound smart, like the host of the Am Writing Fantasy podcast. Hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, right. uh, so, yeah, no character arcs, nothing. You just... There's sort no like, character. No, no. Why do you need that? It's your, just stupid stuff. Okay. Yeah, but wait. I mean, you're making it too complicated. You just want some characters 
who go out and do crazy stuff, all kinds of things happening, the end, right? It, it's a good story. You don't need all that. And then he was sad about blah, 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 and uh, 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 all the touchy feelings. I mean, what do you don't need all that. It's not. It's basically Conan the Barbarian, right? We just talked about how awesome it is. Except Kai, I didn't get along with Kai. I have a chipped tooth from Conan the Barbarian, I'll have you know. <laughs> But you see how memorable it was, huh? You still yeah, remember it. Chipped, yeah, because of the chipped tooth. I, I had yeah. emotional support. Um, yeah. It, well, it's just much better. Instead of all this uh, smarty pants writer advice about making uh, 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 complex characters. Uh, uh, no. Just plain old, make it up as you go along. And if it, for example, suits the story, then all of a sudden the character is... Uh, is an angry villain who decides to do something really, really bad because it makes the story more exciting, then that's what happens. So it's yeah. kind of like a, a madcap extravaganza. Just, 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 just throw it out Make there. up stuff as you go, right? That's the whole point of storytelling. It sounds it's, in its own way a fun way of writing, but oh, it, I honestly think I've read a few stories like this, and I don't think I gave them... <laughs> A very high review. What? It, this is like <laughs> sitting around the campfire, and then somebody is telling a very, very good story. Like right? uh, you, you just remember how wonderful it was that summer evening mm. when Steve or Stephen was telling this this really good story, and you still remember it twenty years later. It's just like amazing. It's like the best of storytelling. This is exactly how to do it. I, I don't... Yeah, th this is the winner for sure. But oh, right. see if you can top me then with your number one. I doubt it, but I, I dare I, you. I have to admit, I don't think my number one is nearly as much fun as that one. Because yeah, I see. was... Yeah. yeah, I have to admit, cause mine was... I was trying to think of something random, kind of easy, and I happened to have been gifted a long time ago this, like, four-inch dictionary that's leather-bound and gold-leafed. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. It's a, it's a gorgeous dictionary, even though, like, probably half the words, <laughs> half the modern-day words are not even in it anymore. It's so old. But I was just thinking, you know what? You just flip that open, pick a word, do it again, and you pick out, you know, 10, 20 words, and you make a character out of whatever random words you land on. Just... Why not? Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, if it, if it's a story about an ins insane asylum, I think that would work fine. I will see. You could again. This is sort of like the random character generator. You could come up with something you never would have expected. You land on like expeditious or stunted. You could definitely create some some schizophrenic lunatics. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I it might work really well with your number one because they all sounded a little bit like lunatics. <laughs> to be no, 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 not at all. I mean, they my cheat. number one was about creating excitement and taking the story where, following the story where it takes you. Right, that was my number one. And letting the That's character cheat. something I completely to... different. Um, sure. <laughs> well, I'll just mm -hmm. agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to admit though your number one would I, I swear I have read books like that where the character just <laughs> changed from one chapter to the next and I'm like is this did they <laughs> like, just put happened? the name on is this the same name on a different character or, or? Well, maybe they maybe they did a sort of replace and made a mistake or something. Oh, I have wondered that at times I honestly have hmm. <laughs> Oh well, my god, yeah. Yeah, so So what do you think? I I am actually I have to I hate to admit it, but I am still stuck on thirty five point of view novel. It would that one just kinda of tickles me. I don't know why. <laughs> but it, yeah, yeah, I but... think well, I, I, I actually have to admit I kinda of like your list. Those are some really horrible ways of creating characters. What I what do you mean horrible? It, it's it's about <laughs> following your muse, right? It's taking, just follow the story. Don't give a shit about all those writing advice stuff. You know, go where the story goes. Yeah. Oh, you make Amen. me want. You make me want to take my lap. Well, maybe not my laptop. A borrowed laptop because I tend to destroy everything. To a good bar, have a nice 
glass of scotch on the rocks and just start writing like a mad woman and see what comes <laughs> out. So you have totally inspired me. I, 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 I begrudgingly admit, I think you win this one. Yes, I said it <laughs> in the beginning, and so it is true. <laughs> I, yeah, I think your character creation, you have totally devoted <laughs> a, a authentic way of creating some really <laughs> crazy characters. Uh, oh, so you're telling me that winning this one actually means that I'm the worst at cre- uh, I'm not sure that <laughs> this is not where I wanted it just to go. <laughs> Really? You should see the gold star I made for you. <laughs> oh, damn. I don't want that. No, no. Okay. I think we need to get back to some more serious talk uh, next week. This this is... Well, I, I make a point on my board, but um, I don't know. Maybe we actually we should start making a point board because I don't know. I must be in the lead, though. I must be. You, you keep telling yourself that. I think this one, de- this one deducts points from your board, so, can, so keep that in mind. Uh, now, uh, now I'll just end the podcast because this is getting too much now. Okay, so next Monday we are discussing Bookstagram and if influencers are helpful to your book sales. If you like what you just heard, there's a few things you can do to support the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. Please tell a fellow author about the show and visit us at Apple Podcast and leave a rating and review. You can also join Autumn and Jasper on Patreon.com slash AmWritingFantasy. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get awesome rewards and keep the Am Writing Fantasy podcast going. Stay safe out there and see you next Monday.